Amen. There is a word from the Lord. Amen. 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 There is a word from the Lord. Uh, we're going to continue in our, our colors of Christmas season. Amen. Uh, and the scripture today is coming again from the 23rd division of the Psalter. 23rd Psalm, and I'm just going to lift up that second uh, uh, verse to all lead right. us into our lesson. It's already been read. You can black uh, for all of us to hear. And it reads, He makes me to lie down in green pastures, mm -hmm. He leads me beside the still waters. Uh -huh. Amen. Yep. Last week we talked about a blue Christmas. Amen? Uh, yes. A blue Christmas. We ain't gonna, we're going to have a blue Christmas. We represent <laughs> the majesty of the Lord. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Amen. The kingship of the Lord. But we ain't going to have the blues. Amen? Amen. We're going to have a blue Christmas, but without the blues. We're going to be worried about what we don't have. Amen. This week I just want to talk to you just for a little while about a green Christmas. Amen. A green Christmas. Pray with me, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, enter this place right now. Enter our hearts and enter our minds with your precious Holy Spirit. Lord, anoint us now that we might be able to receive the word that you have for us during this Christmas season. Lord, touch somebody's heart that they might be changed. Lord, touch those that that need a little joy this Christmas. Touch all those that are going to, through bereavement. Touch all those that are sick. Touch the McBride family. Sister Dorothy McBride. Lord, send a special blessing upon Brother Donald Jr. Amen. As he graduates from, from college. Lord, we thank you all that you've done. Lord, right now, I furthermore pray that you would take me and hide me behind the shadow of the cross. This waiting congregation might not see me, but Christ in me. Bless somebody's soul. Yes, Cleanse and make them whole. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, I do pray. Amen. 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 Last week, we talked about the, a green Christmas. and This week, I mean a blue Christmas. This week, I want to talk about a green Christmas. Still got two more colors left. Amen. Amen. You got a red Christmas, Christmas, and of course you got a white Christmas. Right. Amen. We'll get to those later. Today we want to talk about a green Christmas. You know, when the fall time comes, leaves start dropping from the trees. Have you ever noticed that there's a few trees that stay green? Yes, sir. <laughs> there's a few trees that never change color. They never drop uh, their leaves. They stay green all year long. And the beauty of spring and summer seems to fade out during the fall. We have a, a beautiful summer of green and then we have a very short time of very vivid colors, and then all that fades out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, during the fall until we stumble on a single tree mm -hmm. or two, or in the midst of a, a, a leafless <coughs> forest, you might see a few of them sticking up in the woods. Yes. That's right. They seem to stand tall and green when everything else around them is fading away. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen? Trees uh, that stay green all year long are what they refer to as evergreen yep. yes, trees. Amen. Anybody know that? Amen. Evergreen trees. That, and, 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 and there's not just one kind of evergreen tree, but there's several different kinds. Mm -hmm. You have pine trees, you have spruce trees, you have fir, you have 
cedar trees. Mm -hmm. and, and then within the spruce family, there's different types of spruce. You, know, you have the, the, brew, the blue spruce. You have the piney spruce. And, but uh, the most familiar are the pine, the spruce, the fir, and the cedar right. tree. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're beautiful. Any time of year you see these trees, they're beautiful. Amen? Amen. Amen? And they look like they keep the same green color no matter whether it's snow on the ground or whether the sun is shining. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. so, so when there's no color on the landscape, everything has turned to brown, you can always spot an evergreen tree. Amen. 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 When everything is dry, barren and dead, evergreen tree will let you know everything ain't lost. Right. There's still some green in the world. Amen. No matter what the situation looks like, there's still some green in the world. And you know what else? These trees, they, they, they go all the way to the end of, uh, 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 of the north terrain until it turns into a tundra. Mm -hmm. You have evergreen trees. And people that live in the far north, they actually plant evergreen trees on the right. north side of their house. Mm -hmm. Because the evergreen tree is going to protect the house from the wind mm -hmm. and it's going to protect the house from the snow. Funny thing about the evergreen trees is very difficult to break. Mm. And you'll see them get piled up with snow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the branches will be weighed down until they're yeah, almost yeah, pointing yeah, to yeah. the ground. Mm -hmm. wow. But when the snow melts, that evergreen tree will stand right. Y'all don't hear what I'm talking about. Yeah. Through the wind and through the storm, it'll stand up and come back again. Mm -hmm. It's no wonder that green is one of the colors of Christmas. Mm. Uh, we recently, well, I ain't going to say we, but uh, my wife and, 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 and some others uh, recently decorated our house mm -hmm. for Christmas. And, and I'm going to tell you right off from the onset, I'm not a big fan of putting up no whole lot of decorations <laughs> in the house. Amen? Yeah. I, I figure if you got to put them up, you got to take them down. Amen? And, and so I'm not a big fan of a whole lot of decorations. A little, a little uh, 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 a poinsettia, you know, maybe a little, little tree, you know, or something. Or maybe just take some bulbs and put them on one of the house plants. So you go to color brown? And, and, and that would be Christmas to me. Amen? And it's got nothing... It's got not so much to do with laziness as it does with not uh, uh, clouding the spirit of Christmas. Right. Amen? Mm -hmm. I think that we concentrate in, in, on, on too many uh, unimportant things that don't really <laughs> represent the spirit of Christmas. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't have anything against people that decorate. I think it's, it's beautiful that people go out and risk their lives hanging up lights all on the roof and all all around the edge of the house, getting up on ladders and, 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 and all that kind of thing, but it's not me. But one of the things that, that, that I've, I've, I've noticed uh, as I was preparing uh, this message, as I looked around, is that there was a lot of green. And when the green went up, the dreariness went away. There's a certain spirit when the bright colors of Christmas come around, including the green. Amen? Amen. You got green. We got green along the windows in Garland now. Right. Right. Got a Christmas tree that stands about six foot five inches <laughs> and has lights and is green all over. Oh, Amen? Uh -huh, uh -huh. And of course... That Christmas tree has lights on it mm -hmm. and bulbs on it that are green and red and gold. Right. But green, especially evergreens, mm -hmm. remind us that spring is still coming. Mm -hmm. Trees are still going to blossom. Mm -hmm. Grass 
is still going to grow. It's going to be green again one day. Amen? And the greenery that you see at Christmas time tells you that new life is just around the corner. Yes, Don't you worry about what's going on right now in your life. There's some green still left somewhere. Amen? You might not have any green in your pocket, but there's some green still left in the world. There's some green still around the corner. And, and, and just at the right time, life is going to replace the darkness of the winter time with the light of the summertime is going to replace the dreadfulness and the colorlessness of the winter time with some green. Green is coming back. Right. Right. That's the hope that the Christ child brings to us every time we see green. The Christ child brings to us hope. The green that you see at Christmas time is trying to tell you, don't lose hope. Don't give up. You might be sick. Death might be present and difficulties might be in your life. But if you've got faith in God, then you don't hey, stand hey, alone in the middle right. of the winter time. Or you don't stand alone in the, in the, in, in the, in the season of your discontent. There's some evergreens. Yes. That never fade. There's some things that never lose their color. There's something about the Lord. He never runs out of green. You got to stand firm and testify. Even in the midst of your trouble, there's still some goodness. I don't know about you, but he, even though you might be going through some trouble, you, you need to still testify there's still Amen. some goodness. Yes. Amen. I don't have no money in my pocket, but guess what? I, I'm walking on my own. I'm, there's still some goodness. Uh, you know what? I don't have no family. My family is all died on me, but guess what? I got some friends, and there's still some goodness in the world. I, I don't care what you're going through. You've got to look around and testify that there's still some green. Yes. 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 Amen. I wish somebody knew what I was talking yes. about today. All right. You know, the text here um, basically focuses on a man named David who was believed to have written the majority of the Psalms. Mm -hmm. And he kind of is trying to explain to us how God will give us peace mm -hmm. and nourishment if we're faithful in the midst of difficult times. Amen? Amen? Now, David knew what he was talking about because his life is a living example of how God will provide for you. Amen? Amen. David struggled for his existence. He struggled for survival. And the range of struggles took him from a mere boy who was faced with lions and bears to taking a challenging stand against a, 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 a giant named Goliath. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And in all of those situations, one thing you notice is that God provided for David with, his, with, with, with whatever he needed at the time. Mm. And sometimes he provided for him with things that looked like they were strange. Yes. Amen? When he faced lions and bears and he faced the giant called Goliath, I know David probably thought, you know what, God, I really need a sword. Yes, sir. But God gave him a slingshot. Y'all hey, don't hear what I'm talking about. That's how it is with some of us. You know, many times we crying out, crying out for more money, crying out for more people, crying out for more clothes, crying out for more property, when God has really given us exactly what we need. Come on, yes, sir what you need yes. you know some folk you know you give them a little bit too much they're gonna mess themselves up am i right about right. Right. you know if, if some of us had a little just a little bit more money than we do have y'all don't hear what i'm talking about today we wouldn't be sitting here on sunday morning we would be we'd be out somewhere in the mall shopping somewhere we'd be going off on some trip somewhere some cruise if we had just a little bit more money uh, we'd be somewhere getting our car waxed. That brand, y'all don't hear what I'm talking about today. If we had just a little bit more, God gives you just enough of what you need. 
when Saul, oh, when 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 David got hunted by King Saul, he didn't have nothing to eat. I knew he wished he had a a steak dinner. I knew he wished he could go out and shoot down the Longhorn and get him a a nice steak. Don't nobody else like Longhorn. I, I like Longhorn. Uh, shoot down the Longhorn and and get himself a steak. But God gave him what he needed. He gave him bread from the priest table. Y'all hear me? And in all of these experiences, in all of these things that happened to David, David made up in his mind that God gave him more than enough to keep himself going. That's why he wrote, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not, what? I shall not want. And, and, and don't get me wrong, now David wasn't saying that he didn't want anything. But that he would not be left in one of those things that he really needed. Y'all hear what I'm talking about today? I, I know you want some things, but 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 David is saying that if if you know like I know, you'll praise the Lord bec because you're not in one. I know you might want to eat something else, but, but you need to praise the Lord that you're not in one. Uh, I know you want to wear something else, but you need to praise the Lord that you're not in one. Uh, uh, and y'all don't hear what I'm talking about today. I know you want to live somewhere else, but you need to praise the Lord that you're not in one. Somebody lost their home. It didn't have nobody to take them in. Somebody lost their, their loved one and didn't have nobody else that they could call on. Somebody ran out of money and didn't have nobody that they could turn to. You, y'all don't hear what I'm talking about. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen. He said he's going to give you what's essential. And he said including green don't forget about green now. Green pastures. And some still waters. He anointed my head with strength for the valley of the shadow of death. He said when he anointed my head with oil, I don't even fear. Y'all don't hear what I'm talking about. Once the Lord touched me, I don't even fear. And 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 the idea of green pastures, you know, is something that we don't really, uh, 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 some of us might not even catch on to because, you know, that shepherd talk. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. We, we ain't taking nothing to pasture. The, but the most we're going to do is pour some dog food in the bowl or some cat food in the bowl or sprinkle some food in the fish tank. We, we ain't taking nobody to pasture. Amen. But when, 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 when a shepherd took care of the sheep, he wanted to find the greenest, freshest grass possible yes. to give nourishment and fulfillment to the sheep. And then he wanted to take the sheep to steal water because sheep get scared real quick. And, and if the water was running too fast, they wouldn't drink. They couldn't drink comfortably. Amen? Amen. And as sheep follow the shepherd, he's going to take them to green pastures. Yes. And when you follow the Lord, He's going to take you, David said, to green pastures. Yes, He's going to find nourishment for you. He's going to find fulfillment for you. And the essence of Psalm 23 and 2 is that God is going to provide you with what you need. Amen. Amen. And God is going to help you to stand. Yes. Amen? Amen. But let's talk a little Thank bit about God. that green Tree. All right, all right. Amen? Amen. Amen. Just about in everybody's home, you're going to find some kind of Christmas decoration Amen. this season. I don't care if it's a reef or, or, or it's a bulb or it's a light or whatever it is, you're going to find some Christmas decoration around some Christian homes. And a lot of us are going to have some Christmas trees. Most of us have your Christmas trees up already. Amen? Mm -hmm. And if, if you're like me, you got just a plain uh, artificial tree. That's right. 
Amen? Amen. It don't matter. You think you're better than me because you got a real tree. <laughs> but see, it don't matter. The artificial tree look just as good nowadays Amen. As, as, as the real tree. Amen? Amen? I remember back in the day, you get an artificial tree, everybody knew you had an artificial tree. Amen? Uh, nowadays, you can't really tell the difference between an artificial tree and a real tree. And, 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 and most of them are going to be green. Some of y'all, you know, y'all trying to get a little creative. You know, some folk got black trees. Some folk got white trees. Some folk got, 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 you know, all their decoration is black. You know what I mean? Santa Claus is dressed in black and white. You know, uh, they think it's an ethnic thing. Well, I like green. Uh, yeah. Amen. I like red. Yeah, red. Yeah. Amen. And I like white yeah. at Christmas time. Right. right. Uh, but most of our trees are going to be green. Am I right? Amen. Amen. And, and, and and there's one type of evergreen tree that you don't see that much. Green and red. That the church needs more of. Go ahead, and that's the cedar tree. Uh, right. Amen. I know you're used to the spruce, you're used to the fir. But we need more cedar trees around the church. Amen? And, and, and one of the things that you'll find out with the cedar tree is that cedar trees make real good wall studs. Amen? You know the things that go behind your wall that frame the wall before they, before they put the plaster on, before they put the, the sheetrock on, that's called the studs. And, and many, uh, uh, if, you, if you've got a real well-built home, you're going to have cedar studs mm -hmm. in your walls. Amen? Yeah, right. yeah. And cedar trees are useful in that they, the, the, the small ones, they can use to make building studs. Uh -huh. Amen? So, the walls in the building would collapse without them. And you couldn't hang anything on the wall if it wasn't for the studs. Amen? Yeah. It would fall off after a while. Y'all got me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a few members in here today that have been evergreen wall studs in the church. You don't see them. You don't really know what they're doing. They ain't bragging about what they're doing. But whatever the church does successfully hangs on them. If they don't work, if they don't get the job done, then the programs are going to fall. The money ain't going to get taken care of. The lights going to go out. That's cedar stud members. Amen? If a program in this church is going to succeed Look behind it, and you're going to see some evergreens Amen. holding it up, supporting it, organizing it, getting the money together for it, yes. and it ain't going to collapse. Yes. And then another thing I found out about cedar trees, because the Bible talks about cedars a lot, cedar trees don't have knots. <laughs> Y'all don't hear what I'm talking about. Evergreen cedar trees generally are free of knots. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a knot is, a, is like you look at the paneling that's up here and you see the discoloration. You see where, where uh, a knot is where a branch has grown out of the tree. And that, mm -hmm. that, that, that discoloration stays within the wood, deeply within the wood for the life of the wood. Mm -hmm. Cedar trees don't have knots. They're not free. And they're rot resistant. Amen? Amen. Cut one down, and you ain't gonna find no knots. And the wood's gonna last you for years. It ain't gonna rot away like other stuff. No, sir. Right. The church needs some folks who are not free. All right. Mm. Not afraid to step out on faith. Go ahead, not stingy. Mm. Not mess makers. Not afraid to work. All right. 
no. and just not rotten. The church needs some folk that are just not. How many know we got rotten folk? Mm. <clears throat> Y'all don't hear what I'm talking right, about. And and evergreen Christians, they stay strong. Yeah. Even though they've been around the church for years, they just keep on working. Amen. Even though they've been through some ups and they've been through some downs, evergreen Amen. Christians Amen. just keep on keeping on. Amen? Amen. That's what 1 Corinthians 15 and 58 was talking about. Therefore, my beloved brother, be steadfast. Yeah. Unmovable. <laughs> Always abounding in the work of the Lord. It said, yes, yes. stay evergreen. Mm -hmm. And then, you know what? There's a, there's a phenomenon called the humming cedars. Y'all ever heard of it? Mm -hmm. The humming cedars, they sing in the wind. And when other trees have lost all of their leaves and, and are brown, the wind blows and nothing happens. Mm -hmm. Except when you got a cedar tree. Right. <laughs> a cedar tree catches the wind and starts to sing. Amen? Amen. Amen. Its, it's leaves wave in the wind and it starts to whistle and to hum. Y'all hear what I'm talking about? Amen. In fact, there's a type of evergreen called the humming cedar that really loves the wind. The more the wind blows, the more it keeps on humming. And the humming has a quieting effect. It has a calming effect on people that are around it. The church needs some folk that can hum when the wind blows. They, 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 they bring calm to chaotic circumstances. They remind us to focus on God's face and to give ourselves to Him. They remind us of what David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. And then, one thing I like about cedar, and why I wish I had some more cedar members, is you know cedar catch on fire real quick. Amen. Cedar is a type of evergreen that campers love to have because it's filled with sap, and it'll catch on fire real quick, and it'll burn. For a long time, it takes a whole lot of water to put out some cedar. <laughs> and when it burns, it makes noise. It crackles and it pops. And, 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 and wouldn't it be great if we had a church filled with evergreen members who had lots of spirit that, that would say amen real quick, uh, that would catch your own fire real quick, that you wouldn't have to stroke them and you wouldn't have to prime them and they just start crackling and popping just at the spirit of the Lord. There'd be some folk in here that won't catch on fire even if you douse them with gasoline. They will sit there and their arms. I wish I, I uh, y'all hear what I'm talking about. I wish I had some folks who would catch on fire. See, there's some evergreens in here. It don't take much because the Lord has blessed them so, and it don't take much from the catch on fire. All you got to do is sing the right song, they'll catch on fire. All you got to do is give the right scripture, they'll catch on fire. It's some evergreen folk in here. After all the Lord has done for them, they'll catch on fire in a minute. They burn for a long time. You ready to go on with the service. You ready to go on with the announcements. They still shouting. Your soul will catch on fire. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One thing you got to realize is that the taller a cedar is, the deeper his roots go. That's unique about evergreen. That's why the wind can blow and they can bend, but they can come back. Amen? If they grow 300 feet tall, then their root goes 300 feet down. Amen? Evergreen stands in the storm. It don't topple over. It'll bend, but it ain't going to break. Because it's got deep roots that's holding on. Yes, it is. Some of us need to follow the example of this evergreen tree. Amen. You need to hold on. You need to be rooted in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. So deep that when the storms of life start to rage, yes. that you root it in your faith. And you're going to hold on yes. until the storm is over. Yes. <laughs> 
Uh, somebody know what I'm talking about. I heard the songwriter say, in times like these, you need an anchor. Be very sure that your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. You know what, brothers and sisters, I got to go. I told you I wasn't going to be here long, but I wanted to tell you a little something about these evergreen trees. Because in the Christmas season, you got to be reminded that our Savior told us that He was going to stay with us forever. Yes, sir. In Bethlehem, Jesus was born, but in Jerusalem, just before He left the earth, Amen. He told His disciples, and lo, I'll be with you, even mm. unto the end of the world. Amen. That's a promise that lasts forever. Amen. That's an infinity promise. That means that the Lord is always going to be with you. Yes. And when I think of green, I think about forever. Yes. When I think about green, I remember what Psalm 30 and 12 says. Oh Lord, my Lord, I'll give thanks unto you forever. I think about what Psalm 37 and 28 says. The Lord forsakes not his saints. They are preserved forever. I think about what Psalm 52 and 8 says. But I am like a green olive tree. In the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I'm thinking about what Psalm 61 and 4 says. I will abide in the tabernacle forever. I'm thinking about what Psalm 106 and 1 says. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. It's good to be an evergreen, and evergreen reminds me that my God lasts forever. And evergreen reminds me that I got a special anointing that allows me to stand in the cold or in the heat without losing my faith. It's that evergreen anointing that seems to prompt me to say I will trust in the Lord until I die. It's those evergreen believers that say I trust in God wherever I may go out on land or in the raging sea. Don't come with me from day to day. My heavenly father watches over me. Storms may rise or winds may blow but I'm forever going to keep on praising God. As a close, I'm thinking about the story of the little boy that watched his grandfather buy a chest at an antique store. The boy said, "Then why are you buying that old chest? Why did you buy it? It's so old and it looks so rough." Well, his grandfather said, "It reminds me of the Lord." The little boy got puzzled. He said, why does this remind you of the Lord, granddaddy? He said, well, this chest is made of evergreen wood called cedar. And when you put your clothes in it and you close the door, the bugs and the insects won't bother you. It's got a special something that protects your clothes from getting hard. And when I think of that, I think of how the Lord wraps me up and and he puts a hedge of protection around me and protects me from the moths and the bugs of life. Well, I don't know about you, but that's good enough for me to praise the Lord right there. You ought to praise the Lord because forever his grace is sufficient and his love is so abundant. You ought to praise the Lord because his mercy is everlasting and his promises are sure. Whenever I see green I start praising God because his burdens he's lifted off my shoulder whenever I see green I start praising the Lord because of the hills he helped me to climb whenever I see green I get to praising the Lord for the bills he helped me pay whenever I see green I start praising the Lord for the job he helped me find Whenever I start praising the Lord, I see green because of the house that he gave me. When I praise the Lord, I see green because he saved my soul.
that's what he did when he went to cowering. He died on an old rugged cross, but early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. He's taking me to green pastures. I will bless the Lord forever. I will trust in the Lord forever. I'm an evergreen Christian. I'm going to keep on praising him. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? I'm an evergreen Christian. I'm going to keep on praising him. I'm going to keep on serving him forever. Forever. Until I die. I'm an evergreen Christian. I will trust in the Lord. Ain't he all right? I need some evergreen Christians to say I don't care storms may rise winds may blow I'm still gonna praise him I'm still gonna lift him up I might lose everything but God is still good somebody might die on me but God is still good I might not have no money but God is still good I might get sick but ain't he alright ain't he alright hallelujah I will trust in the Lord Somebody say, how long you going to serve him? How long you going to stick with the Lord, Leroy? How long you going to stay with him? How long you going to sing his songs? How long you going to praise him? How long you going to pray? How long you going to... Until I can't do it no more. Until... Oh, I used to hear old folks say, till my tongue has been cleaved to the roof of my mouth. Until they bring me out on my cooling board. I will trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, I got to praise him. I got to serve him until I die. Listen, stand to your feet. I recognize everybody in here today. So I know that you're all got a relationship with the Lord. Amen. And I know you're looking to the Lord this season to get some green. I ain't talking about no evergreen. I'm talking about green backs. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. You're looking to get some green. Listen. 
the Lord will give you everything that you need. And you know them folk, them folk you you rushing around trying to buy gifts for at the last minute. They ain't even gonna use it. Amen. 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 You got a couple folk that's close that you want to show appreciation for. That's fine. No, you know, don't run around here trying to buy stuff for all these folks. I'm telling you, it's a trick. It's a trick. It's a trick of the retail industry. They want to make you think you got to get something for somebody or you doing somebody wrong. You got kids, you take care of them. You got loved ones, you take care of them. But all this running around trying to li listen, I, I'll tell you right now. If you don't give me nothing, that's fine. I done had so many people over the years say, oh yeah, I love you. I love you, Rev. I love you, Rev. And don't give you nothing. Amen. Don't even think about giving you nothing. Amen. I don't expect nothing. But you go giving me all kind of stuff, then you think I'm gonna give nine. <laughs> Amen. I want y'all to have a blessed Christmas for those of you that are not coming back for our Christmas service. Listen, next week we're gonna talk about a red Christmas. Amen. How about that? Amen. We're going to talk about a red Christmas. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for what our eyes have seen. We thank you for what our ears have heard. Lord, we thank you for all our evergreen Christians that you brought here. The ones that serve every Sunday. The ones that, 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 that give up their talent and give up their money and give up their time. We want to thank you for them, Lord. Lord, bless us now as we go our separate ways. May the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest rule and abide with each and every one of us now and forevermore. Let the people of God say amen. Amen, amen and amen.